Hey guys, today I want to talk about NVVM and data binding. But before I talk about what it is, I want to talk about why do we need it. So to explain that I've created this page, this page is pretty simple. So this page takes name, email address, and checks if the student is foreign student or not. And then when I click on submit, it shows a message saying that, hey Bill, we sent you a verification code on your email address, you should verify your account. And the code is pretty simple. You know, we have added this control, these controls for taking the name, email address, and if the person is foreign student or not. And then in code behind, when you're clicking on the button, I'm showing a display message on a label saying that you have to verify your account. So what's wrong with this approach? The disadvantage with this approach is I will have to remember all the control names and the property names to add to get the values from UI. And also, if a UI developer goes and changes the name of the control, then my presenter logic, presenter layer logic breaks. You can see that it's not working anymore. So my UI and my code behind is tightly coupled. So how do we fix this? There's so we can create a bridge between our UI and code behind. I wish we had a object which was bound to our UI controls and its properties and I can access that object in my code behind to do things so that I don't have to access the controls I would just access the object and do things so how do we do that and doing that approach is MVVM so we already have this view this is MVVM design pattern so we already have this view. So the object that I'm talking about is the view model. We do not have that. So let's go ahead and create that view model. I'm going to add a class and call it as enroll student view model. Awesome. So what we need to do is we need to have the same properties which are there in the UI. So we need to create a property for full name. We need to create a property for email address and foreign student. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to say it's a string property and it's full name and another string property. It's an email address. And the third property is a Boolean property. And I'm going to call it as is foreign. Now, now we have the view model that I was talking about. We have the view and we have the view model. See, MVVM is a design pattern and it could be used with any programming language. But there are very few programming language which provide the binding between view and view model. And fortunately, Xamarin.com does that. So how do we bind our enrolled student view model with our UI? So to do that, what we need to do is we'll have to go in our UI and pull a namespace first. I'm going to say call it as a local variable and it's user interface. That's my namespace. And before we start our page, what we have to do is we have to tell our form, we have to tell our UI, okay, we need to do some binding here before you start, before you start your page. Awesome. So what we did here is we bound our view model, the view model that we just created with our UI. Another thing that we need to do is we once now we bound our view model to UI, but our controls still don't know what it to bind to. So I'm going to say, hey text, please bind this text to full name. Hey email address text box, please bind this text box to property email address of view model. Hey switch please bind the switch to as foreign boolean awesome now 
we have bound our view model to UI and then its properties to controls which are which are there on UI. So we don't need to now we don't need to access this controls and its properties on button click. What we can do is we can tell our binding context. We can tell our binding context. Hey binding context, please convert yourself into enroll student view model. And then we're gonna catch that in our in a local variable here. We're gonna say hey enroll student. I'm gonna rename it. And then instead of using the controls, what we can do is we can just use this local variable and say that okay, I don't need control anymore. I can just use this object and get get the values which are bound to UI. Awesome. Let's run this and now see how it looks like. Cool. So when I run it, I'm going to I'm going to enter some details here. I say bill at gmail and as far and when I click on it, see I didn't use controls in its property, I use view model. To show the show the label to populate the message and it's populating the message properly awesome so now we were able to use properties from the view model in our code behind it's not just the properties that we can bind to our view model what we can do is we can bind events too awesome so I don't want this function here in code behind it's ugly because uh, what if someone goes and changes the UI then how uh, it's gonna break again because this label text property is still here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this piece of code I'm gonna cut this piece of code I don't want this code here I'm gonna put it in our view model and make this a public public function and Call it as submit function and I don't need this parameters here and I don't need the binding context because I'm already in the view model cool now what I need to do is I have to see I'm already in the enroll student uh, view model so I did I don't need to put this local variable here. I can just say okay access just this object's properties. Awesome. Uh, so now that we have created this submit function, we need to bind this function to our click method. To our click method. So we now we don't have this click method. So how do we bind this button to this function? To do that we have to create a command so i'm gonna say public i command and call it as submit command and i'm gonna call it a, it's a new command and pass submit function to it and we'll have to pull some namespaces here i'm gonna get rid of this i and and Xamarin forms awesome so now I have a submit command which is calling the submit function so we'll have to just bind the submit command to our button here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say command bind it to submit command submit command there awesome now when I click on this button is going to call the submit function in my view model so that I don't need any code behind in my XAML CS file. Awesome. But we still have this error message because the label is not there in view model. So to get rid of that error, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say create a property called as string and call it as display message. Awesome. And instead of updating the label text, what I'm going to do is update my property here. Awesome. And then go in my code behind and tell label, hey, 
you will have to bind yourself to this property display. Awesome. So what's happening here is when I click on this button, it's going to call submit function and the submit function will update this property in view model display message and then it will get populated. I'm going to put a debugger here and run this piece of code. Awesome. I'm going to say bill, bill at gmail, gmail.com and say yes, it's a foreign student. When I click on submit, see it's calling that submit function now. And the display message does say that bill, you know, verify your account. And you can also see that it's a foreign, he's a foreign student. But when I click on continue, you can see that the message did not get populated. Why is that? The reason why it did not get populated because we did one one way binding. We got all the values from view and we put it in view model. But when we updated our view model, we forgot to tell view you have to update yourself too. We did data binding, we did not notify UI to update itself. So how do we do that? So this part is kind of tricky, so stay with me. We'll have to implement I notify property changed interface. So I'm going to get I not notify property changed and I'm going to implement that interface. Awesome. Uh, and what we'll have to copy this piece of code from Notepad. I'm gonna copy paste this piece of code and in, um, in the video description so that you know you don't have to type that. Uh, and I'll explain what this code does. Is I'm going to get some spaces here. So what's happening is this is an interface which implements property changed event. And whenever a property is changed, we are telling the you we are telling UI to update itself. We are telling UI, okay, you have to update the control which is bound to this property. But this function needs to get called every time display message gets set. So let's, we'll have to create a private property. I'm going to call it as private string display message and then then say that okay whenever you want to get return this display message and whenever you set we'll have to add a semicolon here whenever you set um whenever you set set the display set display to value and when you set this property also call on property changed event awesome so what are we trying to do here is when we call submit when we click on the button we are updating the setting display message and when we set the display message we are calling on property changed event which will go and update our ui awesome so let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks like Cool. I'm going to enter bill, bill at gmail.com, set the property and click on submit and it will come and it'll update the display message. When I click on continue, you can see the label getting populated now. That's how you can achieve two way binding. Uh, see, this piece of code is very tricky and it's very difficult to explain and understand. So if you have any questions, you can put those questions in the comment section and I will get back to you. In my next video, I'm going to talk about list view and how you can bind data to list view. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.